Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know, Ignite Service was inspired and birthed from a desire to, to want to see Christians uh, come to a place where they are not just um, doing the church thing. What's the church thing? The church thing is when you just go to church and you sing songs and you give a few amens and a few claps and then you leave back into this world and you are still dealing with the same issues, still dealing with the same problems. There really isn't progress and, uh, and life is still miserable and you're just surviving instead of thriving in God. And eventually you get busy with life and then life takes the place of your worship and once those things take place of your worship then it interrupts this intimacy that you're trying to develop with God and then before you know it your fire's put out and and more and more we see that with with the church of America do you know that today statistics show that um, that most Christians only attend church now once or twice a month. That is the average attendance of Christians, believers, people that say they, they, they love God, people that say they are passionate about God, people that say that they believe in the full gospel are, are slowly but surely just kind of just getting a little bit more comfortable. So I... I, I thought to myself, let's do a service once a month called Ignite where, of course, we got our, our, our typical teachings that we do every Sunday. Well, they're not typical. They're, li they're life-changing. But, <laughs> but once a month, we do Ignite, and we just have a Holy Ghost time. You know what I'm saying? And we just go a little bit longer, and we just let our hair down, and, and we let our hair get undid, undone, whatever you want to call it. And we just... We just get in the presence of God like, like tonight. Look, we, we went almost an hour of worship. Okay, almost an hour. Did that feel like an hour? It didn't feel like, right? When, when you're enjoying the, the presence of God, it doesn't feel like you've been here that long. But let me just tell you what, what revival means because I believe that every single one of us, hopefully and honestly, we want to see uh, a revival. Now, what's revival? Because the story I'm going to read to you tonight is, is, is when Jesus started the the one of the first revivals in, in in the bible and then we're going to take it from there but let me give you a description or a definition of revival revival means to um to improve a a a current condition it means to strengthen something it means improvement it means recovery it means rallying um another definition says it means a reawakening aren't you glad that if you've been asleep that you can wake up again reawakening it means religious fervor or spiritual fervor um, it also means a restoration of not only body but a restoration of mind God wants a personal revival to begin with you and I but we have to get the revelation of what what does it mean to, to start a revival? Because Jesus, in the story that I'm about to share with you, begins to set up this whole scene. I mean, it's like when, when, when you're going through something, God will use your something, whether it's ugly, messy, dirty, uh, disgusting. God will use it. Do you know that God will anoint your mess? I mean, God will just take your mess ups and he'll just put some anointing on it and rewrite your story. And it's like, wow, I was lost, but now I'm found. Amen. Aren't you glad that that's the God we serve, that he can just renew, redo, redefine who you are, right? And so in the story, uh, I'm not going to go into it in the scripture just because of sake of time. But do you guys remember the story of Lazarus? So just think this way. So you have Martha and Mary. Martha was the sister of her brother Lazarus. Mary was family as well. And uh, Jesus is busy, you know, doing healing crusades. And Martha and Mary, they run over to Jesus and they say, Hey, um, the man you love, Lazarus, is at the point of death. 
So they bring Jesus bad news. I mean, they're very clear with what's taking place. They're saying, your, your man, the one that you love, the one that you care about, our family, he's dying. And Jesus said, okay, uh, I'll be right over. And Mary and Martha go back because they were so concerned about the situation. And they're tending to their brother Lazarus. Well, one day goes by. Two days go by. Three days go by. And Lazarus is now dead. And so they do the whole ceremony, the, the, the uh, memorial service. And, and they bury him. And now he's in the tomb. And Martha and Mary are a little ticked. So they see Jesus coming. Have you ever been ticked as a Christian? Have you ever been mad at God? Like, like where were you? Like, why didn't you come? And so they're watching him walk on the scene. And then they come to him and they're like, we told you. Why, did, why are you even here now? Lazarus is dead. And you know what? You know you're in trouble when Jesus or God calls your name out twice. And he says, Martha, Martha. Martha, Martha, the thing that you worry about, man, you crazy girl. And Mary just kept her mouth quiet like, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> and, and Jesus said, don't, don't, everybody say, don't worry. Listen, God wants us to get this, this revival of don't worry for this will be for the glory of God. Whatever you're experiencing right now, don't worry, for this will be for the glory of God. And so we know the story. I'm not going to get deeper into it, but we know that, uh, that God brings dead Lazarus from death to revive, and he stands on the scene, and he tells the people, he's just standing there, he says, Remove that stone. And the sisters were like freaking out like, whoa. No, no. If you remove the stone, it's going to stench. It's going to stink. It's going to stink. Don't do that. And, and Jesus like, no, I'm telling you, remove that stone. They were more concerned about the stink, the smell, the stench than the one who can bring people back from death to life. They were more concerned with the affairs of this world than they were with the affairs of Jesus. He had already showed them time after time. They had experience. They have personally witnessed the power of God like so many of us have. You've experienced God. God has, he's been there for you. There's been moments in your past that, that you knew that if God didn't show up, this would have probably been a very bad situation but at the 11th hour God showed up and so for some reason Mary and Martha they they forgot all this like so many of us we forget that the God who healed you yesterday is the God who will heal you today and the God who heals you today is the God that will heal you tomorrow but it's so easy when life comes to to literally just choke you or or, or get you in a place of of, of grave clothing Huh? When, when the world just begins to just bury you with, with cares of this world, it's so easy to forget the past victories or miracles or whatever it is that you've been through that God has delivered you from. And so they're thinking, man, if you open that thing, people are going to be like, look, look, you know, gagging and vomiting and, and, and just who knows. It would have been a stench vest or something. But, but you know what Jesus does? He says, I told you, remove the stone. And so they remove the stone. And then he comes out with grave clothes. And then he says, now take off his grave clothes. And we know the story. He, they take it off. And, 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 and everyone's like, wow, he came alive. It was, listen. That was the first fragrance revival. I would say fragrance. fragrance. Stay with me. That was the first fragrance revival. Why do I call it fragrance? Because Jesus showed up and he changed the fragrance 
of the atmosphere. He came and he changed the fragrance of the environment. He came in and changed the stench. Come on, I don't care how deep you're in your sin. God can change your stench. Are you hearing me? So, so listen, so listen, let's get into the word. Let's not, we won't waste time with clapping. Let's do this real quick. Check this out. John 12, quickly, John 12, quick, quick, quick. John 12, they got a timer on me, hurry up. John 12, verse 1 through 7. I want you to please take this home and read it because there's more revelation in this. Are you guys ready? Okay, so, so we heard about Lazarus, right? So check this out. A few weeks later, now they're at a party. Huh? They're celebrating the progress. Huh? That's so hard for Christians to do. That's hard for me to do. I'm, so, I, I'm challenged, pray for me. I don't know how to celebrate progress all the time. Huh? Do you? Do you know how to celebrate progress? No, you don't. No, you don't. We got to learn how to celebrate progress. So they just had a victory, and you know what Jesus does? He throws a celebrate progress party, and he has a supper for them. Look, verse 1, then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who? Lazarus. Who? Lazarus. Where Lazarus was. So now, man, here you have a dead man alive. And who, where Lazarus was, who had been what? Dead. Whom he had raised from the? Dead. Lazarus was what? Dead. And whom he raised up from where? Dead. So I don't know what dead situation you're in. But soon you'll be having supper with it. Amen. Amen. Soon you'll be celebrating. Amen. Come on. At Elevate, we celebrate. All right. We'll do that song tonight, P-Felly. Going to celebrate. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, verse 2. Every say there. there. There they made him supper. Ah, oh, it's a party. And Martha, remember, remember Martha, Martha? Martha's now serving quietly like. Sorry, Jesus. And Martha, look at this. And Martha served. But Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. Then Mary, everybody say, then Mary. Mary. Ooh, then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. Are you guys getting this? And the house, everybody say, and the house. And the house. Ooh, this is where it gets really awesome. And the house was what? Listen, and the house was what? Yeah. With what? Mary, Mary had already experienced the fragrance of revival. And now she said, if Jesus can do a revival like that, I can do a revival here right now too. And what better revival to have than to have it with Jesus. And so check this out. So she, she takes not, it doesn't say uh, very cheap oil. Huh? It, it, it didn't say um, uh, very laxed passive oil. Huh? It, it doesn't say uh, uh, very uh, uh, mediocre oil. Do you know that as a believer you can be mediocre, passive, huh? cheap? Can I get an amen right there at the cheap? Yeah, not cheap Christians. Okay, anyways, that's a whole other sermon. And he said he anointed him with, uh, uh, anointed his feet with her hair. And look, and the house was filled with what? With the fragrance of the oil. So basically the value of Mary was what? Jesus. Everybody say the value. So the value of Mary was what? Okay, so she basically showed what she valued. She showed what she valued. Okay, but one of his disciples, Judas, Simon's son, who would betray him, said, why was this fragrant oil not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? This he said, not that he even cared for the poor, but because he was a what? A thief. Don't you dare rob God with mm, everything you put in you. Don't, 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 don't be cheap. See, he was a thief and his value was what? money his value wasn't Jesus his value was money 
And so it says, and, and, uh, but he was a thief. And then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the money box. And he used to take what was put into it. Now check this out. But Jesus said, leave her alone. You listen, when, when you finally come to the place where you don't give a rip what people think about your Christianity, even when you look weird, funky, strange, even when people begin to question your faith, question how you, how you do life with God, Jesus himself will back you up when you value Jesus. And she said, man, he, man, leave her alone. What's wrong with you? Leave her alone. Let her do that. Look, she said, he said, but Jesus said, leave her alone. She has kept this for the day of my what? Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Come on. We got to come to the place of being so ignited that we don't care what the world begins to say about us. It, it, I, I hear so many people tell me, um, and, and, you know, this is on live stream, so I won't say it, but someone that's very professional, amazing, always says to me, why do you give so much money to the church? Why? What you give doesn't, doesn't match what you make. And I said, that's the miracle part, huh? It doesn't. But God keeps providing more and more, but it doesn't match up with what I make. Why? Because when you value Jesus, Jesus will always make up the difference. And he'll tell the devil, leave him alone. Huh? Leave him alone. When you finally get to the place where you're radical and you don't care what people think, like why do you serve so much? <laughs> why do you give so much? Why do you go to church so much? Because I know what I value. And so I'll let God go ahead and tell you, leave him alone or leave her alone, right? And so this, this the, the same woman, okay, uh, uh, Mary, and, and Martha, the same woman who was questioning uh, the, 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 the power and, and, and the, the fragrance of, of environment change of, of what Jesus did is now experiencing this fragrance of revival. And so you have to understand in this, in this scene, Mary had a fragrance of worship in this moment. She had a fragrance of, 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 of not just of worship, but a fragrance that literally provoked two people. Provoke God and provoke the enemy. Do you understand that when you, when you have the fragrance of God, you're going to provoke. When, you, when you're anointed, Alexis, and you're doing what you do, you're getting the attention of two. Jesus and the enemy. Because the enemy is always going to come and cheapen the anointing. The enemy is always going to come and cheapen the gift. The enemy, you know how he cheapens it? When he starts making you get all up in your head. Now you've cheapened the fragrance of Almighty God. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And, so, and so here you have uh, this woman now that already understands based on a revival experience that she saw Jesus had when she brought Lazarus from the dead. Now she's in the midst of this moment where she takes something that was very costly, something that was very important to her, something that she valued so much that she sacrificed and willingly poured out. Do you understand the, that, the, that the worth of this of this fragrance was, was uh, one year's of wages. That's like you coming to the place of revival and you say, you know, God, I'm going to give you my entire paycheck for one year. Oh, we got quiet in this Pentecostal <laughs> church. Are you hearing me? <laughs> That'll provoke something. <laughs> yeah. So think about it. You know what? I remember when I was uh, younger, I used to go to the, the dollar store. And the Sherman Oaks Galleria. You guys remember back in Robinson days? Remember Robinson stores? Robinson's May? Yeah. And right next to it was, I didn't go to Robinson's May. I went to the dollar store. And, and listen, and in this place, it was pretty weird. Uh, I mean, like the stuff in there, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I'm shocked I don't have an extra leg today. But, like, I couldn't afford cologne. And, and the only thing I, I wanted was musk. Remember, guys, the musk? I mean, that was like it, man, right? Like when you were younger, if you had musk, you were it. I mean, it, especially when you were young, young, right? But they didn't have musk. They had must. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, 
Well, dang, it looks close enough. I'll buy me some must. I must have this for a dollar. And, and, I, and it's funny because I remember, you know, it, uh, I would walk in there, and you remember this, right? And I would be like, how much is this? A dollar. <laughs> how much is this? A dollar. <laughs> how about this? I was one of those guys. But anyways, so I got me some must. Shh, 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 must, right? And let me tell you something. I'd walk around wanting to attract, right? Just, man, when I tried, the only thing I was attracting was flies, man. But then later on, as I started, you know, finally having a little bit more in life, you know, and listen, I'm not trying to dog the Dollar Tree or the dollar stores or whatever. Hey, man, we all have a beginning. Amen. But, but I finally got to the place where I can afford some Chanel, right, or whatever, something like that. So, but it was like, oh, oh, yeah. And, you know, you wouldn't want to waste that when I first bought it. It was more like, like a half a spray, right, because <laughs> you want that baby to last for a long time. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and she's just like, ah, right? But then I realized that I would go to work and people would be like, what's that? Oh, that's Chanel. <laughs> and then, you know, I went back home like, shh, shh, right? <laughs> no, but, and it wasn't that I was trying to pick up on it. It's just that there was this fragrance that, that I went from us to Chanel and and so listen and so this woman when you're reading her story she 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 understood that she had a moment where she had a stench in her life but then she got a revelation right huh have you ever Febrezed your house huh yeah Any, anybody allergic to Febreze no anybody all right over here don't worry, it's all good. Right? <sighs> hmm. let, let me tell you something. Don't, don't get upset. We'll wash you off after, after church. <laughs> Listen. Mary came to the place where she brought in a fragrance that changed the atmosphere. She brought in a fragrance that changed the environment. She brought in a fragrance that literally provoke the enemy to say what are you doing you see don't don't count it strange when you fall into various trials because the moment you begin to get the fragrance of God in your life you're going to attract both God and you're going to attract the enemy at the same time but know that God will look at the devil and say leave her alone leave him alone don't touch him can't touch her we got to come to the place where we start carrying the fragrance of generosity the fragrance of faith there's something about a fragrance in a man of God a woman of God when you're walking in the in in the fragrance I mean Romans 13 says put on the Lord Jesus Christ you know why it says that because when you're wearing the fragrance of Jesus there's a smell that comes out of you that people are attracted to do you have a fragrance to reach people when you have the fragrance of Jesus, here's what happens. You have the aroma of hope. You have the aroma of transformation. You have the aroma of healing. You have the aroma of change. We must carry the fragrance of God. Y'all didn't get any of this. Give you some of this. <laughs> Everybody got some except you guys. Everybody say fragrance. We need the fragrance of Jesus back in our life. That's when revival starts, when there is a change of stench, when there's a change of smell. All of a sudden, heaven not only recognizes it, but earth recognizes it. Let me show you another scripture quickly. Are you guys here tonight? Yes. Second Corinthians 2.15 says, our lives are a Christ-like what? I'm sorry. Our lives are what? Let's read it together. One, two, three. So it's, it's a dual fragrance. When you have the fragrance of revival, 
you have the fragrance of faith. When you have the fragrance of faith, you have the fragrance of love. When you have the fragrance of love, you have the fragrance of compassion. When you have the fragrance of compassion, you have the fragrance of care. And heaven looks up, the Bible says, and your prayers come up before me like alms into my nostrils as a sweet smelling aroma. In other words, you become God's light candle. Ever, have you ever lit a candle in your home? I have one of my favorite candles, you know, and it's like the anointing candle. It's like a, a candle from Israel, and, and it's literally uh, different fragrances, like Ferguson's and all these different type of fragrances, and I like that baby at my host house smells like the temple of God in Israel. You know, I feel like I'm walking into like one of the, you know, ancient days, you know, mosses or something. You know, it's just amazing. It's just this, the smell is just like, wow, there's just something about it. It's like, wow. But you know what? But people will also perceive it differently. See, they may not understand what God, how God, how God smells you and how, how, he, how he smells that sweet smelling aroma that comes before him. But people start seeing that there's a fragrance of hope when I see you. There's a fragrance of, of not only hope, but, but I, I, I can do this. I can see it happening. And, and, and there's this fragrance of, 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 of people coming to the place of saying, who are you? What are you wearing? And you say, I'm wearing Jesus. I'm wearing, I'm wearing Jesus. I'm sorry, is that, do they sell that at Macy's? No. No, you, you actually get that at Elevate. Come with me, I'll show you where to get loads of it. Amen. Yeah, you'll smell like me. And we'll both walk together in the sin of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Let's read that again. Our lives are Christ-like fragrance. Your life is what? Christ-like fragrance. Come on, do you have the fragrance of generosity in your life? Or do you have the stench of always holding back from God? Do you have the generosity of reaching out to people? Come on, do you have the fragrance of salvation? In other words, do, okay, fine, you're saved. But is your family going to heaven with you? Okay, fine. You know Jesus. Okay. Do you care if your coworkers go to hell? Honestly. Now, if you, if you read your Bible, if you read the Bible, it's very clear. How can we, if you, have Christ, if you have Christ in you, then you have his fragrance. And his fragrance attracts. And if people aren't attracted to you because of God, if they're attracted to you because of other things, then you know what fragrance you, you got going, girl or bro. Right? You got the check me out fragrance. But when you have the fragrance of Almighty God, there's a fragrance of hope. There's a fragrance of, why are you so different? How do I get what you have on you? Don't worry. Just turn it off quickly. It's okay. Our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to who? To God. But this fragrance perceived, is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. Listen, your sacrifice becomes an aroma before the Father. more comfortable you stay with your just your little Christian helmet of salvation and this isn't to 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 put anyone down this is to hopefully awaken you because you can't sing songs of awaken me and and tremble and all these things but but it's a lot of lip service listen lip service days are over we have to stop the lip service and we have to start putting on the fragrance that people become so attracted to that they say, I, I, I need what you have. There are people that have broken families, uh, broken children. You're the answer. You're the fragrance for that moment. God didn't place you in the workplace just to, 
make a paycheck. He puts you in the place that you work so that you can be his fragrance and that many would be attracted to him because Christ is in you. Christ lives in me. And because of Christ living in me and in you, it's just natural. I just have the smell of heaven because Christ is in me. I don't have to work at it. Every morning I put on the Lord Christ Jesus and I walk into work. I walk into the public and the fragrance of heaven begins to change the atmosphere, the environment. The scripture says when she did that, the house was filled. Put on the fragrance of Christ and watch how your house will be filled. How your children will be filled. How your workplace will be filled. But we must put on this fragrance. And it starts with personal revival. It has to cost you something. It cost her a very expensive perfume. Something that was so much of value. It cost her one year of wages. Now, it may not be obviously money for you. But man, maybe there's just so much self-centeredness. You're self-absorbed with your fears, your doubts. And do you know that's a stench before heaven? That's not, that's not pretty. No. God's saying, let's trade in your, 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 your must, cologne or perfume for my fragrance. Because my fragrance is the fragrance of transformation and change inwardly and outwardly. Amen. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not be so comfortable just going to church and, and you don't change. Your kids don't change. Man, when I see Sophia's, now correct me if I'm wrong, I think you're a single mom, right? You're, you're, you, is there, her dad's in her life? Okay, I haven't met him yet. But I love seeing what you've done. I've only, I've only seen you. What you've done has been tremendous. That's the fragrance of Jesus. Do you understand that? And now your daughter carries the fragrance of Christ at 11. How awesome is that? That's what we need. Our kids should smell like us. They should smell like us, how we carry Jesus. And then people like commanding officers from the Marine Corps look at them and say, ah, chaplain, huh? when people smell you, I wonder what they smell. Cheap. counterfeit real real right here real it's the real stuff it's legit and how many know that this world is just looking for the real this world is tired of the facades of Christianity this world is looking for the truth this world is looking for hope this world is looking for answers and his name is Jesus if today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.